here in association with Box Row Tyne. We like to do different locations. We've done pubs. We've done. Um, where, where else have we done? Seen you in a red light district one time. Yeah, a long, long time ago we did a that. A little as well. innocent interaction. That's it. It was a meeting by chance, and you know what I mean. It was just passing. Exactly. In the that. night, nothing dodgy going on, but yeah, we've we've had a few little interactions. That's it. I think the main one's the pub, though. You know. Yeah, the pub. A nice chilled out environment. You know what I mean. So now we're on our way back from a little boxing event in Tolworth. And I was sat back of the car driving back up the M1. Um, let's talk about it. Tolworth Leisure Centre. Were you saying you've never heard of Tolworth? Um, but what was your first impression of Tolworth as in the town in London? Well, I've seen a leisure centre. That's where the show was and I've seen a load of them. So it was nothing new. I had a little walk around the area. Went to a little cafe, I had a cheeseburger and chips. There was nothing there, to be honest. It was a bit dead. What was the cheeseburger like? Yeah, it was, a, it was quite nice. Seven pound for a cheeseburger and chips. Right opposite. Nice cup of tea as well, yeah. Man. What, what you know, you... right opposite the uh, leisure centre, so. Just went there for a bit, you know, before the show, and uh, yeah. There's nothing there though, Tolworth. It's no disrespect to anyone watching from Tolworth, but it's a bit shit. What, what do you find shit about Tolworth? No action, man. No fucking. A little cafe, a little leisure centre. No nightlife, no energy, do you know what I mean? But the energy got turned up a bit, you know, at the boxing show. Well, let's let's talk about the boxing show. You know, first of all, you met Dean White. How, how was that meeting? You know, were you conscious of anything that you might have said in the past on, on the videos when you met Dean? I'm always worried, you know, not worried, but when I see somebody in the boxing world, I think, oh, have I slagged them off or what? It's not that I'm scared, but it's like, it's just a bit awkward, isn't it? You know, when I do my videos and I'm drinking and I'm drunk, I might say a few little things here and there, but I don't think I've said anything about Dean White. Are you worried about him threatening your life? Big guy, isn't he? He reminds me of Shug Knight, so I think he's got that gangster in him. But nah, he's good. I like him. Yeah. He's got that entrepreneurial spirit as well. He's trying to, you know what I mean? He's trying to. You know, Shug Knight was worth like $300 million, you know, when he set up uh, Death Row Records back in the day. So I think Baby Ting's trying to get to a high level, you know, like that. Do you think he'll Black get Black Box there? Management. I think he's got a few little rappers under his belt, a few boxes, so. He's just trying to grow, in it? So it's good to be around that kind of energy. I'm trying to grow myself. I'm trying to see if. Could we see maybe Tyne Booth under Black Box Management one day? Yeah, we could do. We could do. Uh, I don't want to talk about the politics of his show tonight, you know what I mean? But I think there's a few people on the show, who, you know what I mean? I don't want to fucking talk about his business, but you know, the boxing board are a bit peculiar, you know, as to who they allow on shows and who they don't. So I don't know if they'll let me on a, a show like that. And if you saw there were a couple of guys in there from Tanzania tonight, you know, what, did, what did you make of them in a one? One and four Prince Patel and one four later on in, in the night. Do you want the truth or not? You, you say what you think. I thought it was just... Shit. You know, these little black Africans. They're just so grateful to get a payday, aren't they? So I think they'll just like be willing to just take little dives, you know, take knees and stuff like that from a third world country, so they might take bribes, you know, just to let the home fighter win. Do you actually think that happens, though, really? Yeah, because money is money, isn't it? People love money, so that's why we're all in boxing, to be honest, in Did some way or another. Did you ever take a dive for money? No, uh, you know what, though, I considered being like a, because I wasn't an actual journeyman. I know I lost fights, but I always went there to win, to try and win. But sometimes I used to think it would be probably more lucrative, you know, if I just like lost every week. Because when I beat up, when I beat a few guys, I like struggled to get fights after that. And I was really inactive, but these journeymen are fighting every week, aren't they? So I think a lot of journeymen earn more than 
most so-called prospects in boxing. You met Mick Conlon tonight, you know, Mick, mm. a well-known boxing name. I think I've told you before, a lot of big boxing names watch your stuff. And obviously Mick told you he watches everything. Yeah, shout out to Mick Conlon, you know. He got knocked out the ring by Lee Ward, but he recovered. And I heard, I heard he's doing some decent, these decent things. What's he doing? What's what's the latest with he's, him? I seen a post of him, and uh, he's fighting he for a world title next. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Like I said before, time and time again, like Johnny Nelson lost his first three fights. You know, stuck with it and became a world champ. Shut you know, up. Brendan Ingle. He was like knocking on people's doors when he was broke, asking people if they needed any work doing. You know, like the garden done or whatever. If they needed any walls painted. You know, just hustling. I've seen Dean White here today. Hustling, I like it. Has it inspired you to hustle? Yeah, but I have been doing that anyway. You know, I've been selling my merch. I've sold thousands and thousands of pounds of merch. So thanks to everyone who's bought merch, you know, and sending me like money, you know, when I do my YouTube live streams. I've been sent all kinds of money, five pounds, 10 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 500 pounds. You know, of individual people, so that's like a hustle. That's like, you know, those people who play like instruments in the streets. And you got like a little bucket where people chuck money in. Mm. They're hustlers. You also met the King of Girth himself today for the first time, Prince Patel. Were, were you impressed with him as a person? Uh, you know, was he what you expected him to be? You know, these little guys, they can't fully, fully act arrogant you know in person when someone's like six foot two and they're like five foot you know it's the same with uh i think coogan like bullied prince patel you know and said he'll cave his head in coogan is coogan can't fight but he's, he's a lot bigger than prince patel so when coogan threatened to cave his head in prince patel had to just be quiet did you see that video i've seen it i've seen prince it, patel's yeah. like pretending to stare at his phone, you know, to avoid eye contact with Coogan. When Coogan said he's going to cave his head in. So these little guys, you know what I mean, they, they talk a lot, but when, it's, when it comes to it in person. But me and him have never really had a problem anyway. I've always thought he was quite a little entertaining guy, Prince Patel, but he seemed all right, yeah. Let's talk about his ring walk. What did you make of the ring walk? Or oh, the Indian music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to make history. This is what I mean, man. I, I did a little speech after his fight. I got on camera, didn't I? You got on camera, he did a post fight? Yeah, I got on camera. And um, he was he was basically saying that he wants to make history. He wants to be the first Indian world champion, yeah. But I I said, forget history, forget your legacy. Like when you're dead, you're dead, aren't you? Enjoy yourself now, innit? Enjoy yourself now. He was saying, no, nah, it's all about legacy. But then he was like dissing Barry Jones, you know, saying, oh, so what if he's won a world title? You know, no one knows Barry Jones. So it's all right creating history and having a legacy. But, you know, if nobody knows you, it doesn't really matter. So he's kind of contradicting himself there. He's saying he wants to be a legend, but then he's kind of dissing. Barry Jones isn't really a legend, is he? He did make history. Prince Patel saying he wants to make history. You know, being the first Indian world champ. But then he's slagging off Barry Jones. Saying no one remembers him, but he's still in the history box, isn't it? So, but he might have changed. He might have grown up a bit. You, on the way down, you know, you said that you'd never seen Sonny Edwards box, and I showed you some videos. You've got to see Prince Patel up close in person. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Ty, and if them two were to fight, yeah. how do you think it unfolds? First of all, I want uh, Prince Patel to cave Sonny Edwards' head in, if they ever did fight. But after seeing that tonight, man, I don't know. You show me like highlight reels of Sonny Edwards. You show yeah. me little clips. For me to sit down and watch a whole fight of his, you know what I mean? It's like Instagram and people put their best Foot forward. You got you got to see his skills, you know, you got to see what he does. Yeah, in glimpses. Is he like that the whole fight? Uh, I'm, no, I'm not really bothered. I'd, I'd want Prince Patel to smash him up, but I don't, I don't think he would. 
Does, does he smash uh, Sonia Rudd's up? Well, based on that performance today, the little black African who Prince Patel fought today, I don't know if he took a dive. Like I say, these guys are from third world countries. So, you know, if they offered a little bribe to take a knee to make the home fighter look more impressive, they might do it, you know, for that extra cash. Because in other countries, it's not like in England. In England, you can just get money given to you. You know, job seekers allowance, you can get a house given to you. You've got access to the NHS, you know, hospital services, dental services. But in like certain parts of Africa, you probably haven't got that. So money's a lot more valuable to them kind of people. So you might have took a knee, you might have took a bribe. So... You can make anyone look good. I look good shadow boxing in front of my mirror at home when I'm drunk. So, so based on what you've seen from both of them, I, I, does it go the distance or the, the build-up would be entertaining, wouldn't it? Don't don't you think? Prince Patel said he doesn't care about boxing. He said he just wants to make history. He's been the first Indian world champ. He said he doesn't care about boxing at all. And I'm kind of similar. It's been nice today, you know, to come to this show. I like baby team, you know, I like Boxing King Media. I've met a load of people who watch my videos, shook a load of hands. Anyone spit in your face? <laughs> oh, and they're shouting in my ears up close. What, any small talk? Chit chat, no, because uh, I don't know, man. He was okay, he flowed all right. He was a good flow, it's nice to meet the people, you know, instead of just talking online. It's not the same, is it, when you're talking? on Instagram in a direct message. You know the way we're talking now? Yeah. I won't be able to type like this on my phone to you on Instagram, so it's better to see people face to face. And, and in other boxing tonight, Joe Joyce got stopped by uh, Zhang, big Chinese heavyweight. What, what, what did you make of that? Shocked? I like it when the home fighter loses normally, so. I think it's because I was the away fighter all the time. I used to get robbed, I used to get treated like a con. I don't know, I just like a little upset, you know what I mean? So, I'm not really bothered. Joe Joyce, I kind of like him, but I'm not really bothered if he lost. And Did he get stopped, did he go what, his eye closed or what? Yeah. I heard he was behind anyway. Yeah, that, that's what people online are saying, his eye was closed and the referee stopped it. Um, These oh, guys who were supposed to have good chins, after a while it starts to deteriorate, like Chris Eubank Jr. He was kind of known, one not for having a tough chin. After a while it goes, man, you get older, he's like... You know, people online are saying they'd like to see Zhang in with AJ next, if uh, you know, AJ has come out and said he's not fighting until December, uh, possibly because of a big Saudi tournament happening, but that's all a rumour at the moment. But if Zhang was to fight AJ, do, do you think that would be a good fight? And Joshua has lost it, hasn't he? He's had it beaten out of him by Ruiz, by Usyk, by the guy in sparring when he got concussed. So Joshua is just trying to hang around for a few quid. You know, he's trying to milk it, isn't it? That's what he talks about, money. So that's what he says his drive is now. He used to say he wanted to become a legend and be undisputed, you know, like Lennox, but he realised well, it's not going to happen. So now he's just thinking, oh, forget it. Forget legacy, it doesn't mean anything. That's what he said. He said, oh, I used to just say I want to be undisputed because it's, it's marketing, it's promotion. You know, I, don't, I didn't really mean it, but it's, it, it did mean it. He just realises he's not going to get to the same levels as Lennox Lewis. Some guys are just like untarnished, aren't they? I think Lennox was one of them. Joshua wanted to be that guy, but he's not, is he? It's finished, man. Let, let's I could see it in his eyes, you know, when he came up to me and tried to tell me to get out of his gym. I could see it, man. I just knew he didn't have it. <laughs> he didn't have it, man. He came up to me like four guys, and I was just stood there like, fuck But, you, but you said you left. Nobody. You said you walked out. Yeah, obviously, I'm going to walk out eventually. I can't just stay there all night. And you I, didn't, I didn't just run off as soon as he like said, get out of my gym. I was stood there for ages. Obviously, I got to leave eventually. 
and you I'm wanted to take the, Rob McCracken out as well, didn't you? Say that again. He, he, was, he was thinking of taking Rob McCracken out. Yeah, I was going to go for him. You know what I mean? When I seen Robert McCracken leaving on his own, I thought I'm going to attack him instead. He, he used to be a boxer as well, so maybe, maybe it could have been a good little dust up that. Yeah, I could have got fucked up as well. The retired time booth versus retired yeah, Rob yeah, McCracken. Yeah, yeah, I got an unbeaten record in the streets, you know, in street fights. So Robert McCracken, he might have. I, 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 I reckon Rob could look after himself. He seems quite quite fit bloke for his age. Yeah, I was watching Carl Frotcher's YouTube channel the other day and he said that he went up to a Robert McCracken's hen do or stag do, whatever, whatever men have. And he said Robert McCracken doesn't drink alcohol. So he's probably still in half decent shape. I think I could take him. What, what do you make of Carl Frotch grabbing the bag on YouTube trying to compete? compete with you you reckon yeah i heard that he doesn't do interviews anymore with any of these youtube channels you know because he set up his own channel what do you reckon good good business move or yeah carl frotch is like he's like a polish peasant you know he's polish don't did you know that uh i, I know you've said it a few times but yeah I yeah he's polish he's yeah, yeah so he's got that mentality i used to work in a factory and it was all polish people there and they were like the hardest workers you know grafters they really like value money, you know what I mean? It's grabbing the bag, isn't it? Can yeah, Carl Frotch, yeah. He's got a few properties in Nottingham. I know some someone who rents out one of his properties and he told me that the windows are falling through. And they reported the issue to Carl Frotch and Carl Frotch said, yeah, I'll sort it out, but he didn't turn up. He might be making a YouTube video. He don't want to, you don't want to, you know, like, spend money on new windows. I think that's most landlords, isn't it? Carl Foch was like complaining about some battered onion rings, you know, one time in a restaurant. He didn't, he basically, he went to a restaurant with like two other people, yeah. And the bill was like... <laughs> Carl Foch is mad. I want to have a pint with him. I do like him. We got, maybe you might end up on Frocky's Fro fighting soon. Frocky's fighting soon, should I say. Would you would, do it if he, if he invited you round to no, his house? No, I won't trust him. I feel like it's a setup. Do you he you, invited me round to his house. Do you, can you get fuck you up? He'd get his little brother, leader, alcoholic frotch round as well, you know, to try and do me in. So I wouldn't bother going round, man. It'd be a setup. What, what if you had your brother outside or maybe some of the club members just as backup? Oh, a backup, yeah. Yeah, backup. I'd like to see that, you sat next to his trophy cabinet getting interviewed by Carl Froch. No, he's done well. I don't know why he's ringing up Dominic Kingle complaining. It's yeah. a bit silly, man. You're a, you're a four time world champ. You know what I mean? Multi millionaire. Why are you worrying? A, a lot of people tonight, Tyne, were, um, you know, they watch the video. I told he, you. What? Just remember what you was going to say then, yeah. What? I was walking through town. I've already told you this story. Yeah. And uh, this little homeless person asked me for some change. And I ignored him. And they called me a black bee, yeah? yeah. You know, being a bit racist. Yeah. But I didn't bother smashing them up, you know, for their little racist comment. It's like they're homeless already. Their lives are already fucked up. So what's the point of me messing them up even more? You know what I mean? So kind of relates to Carl Froch. Why is he upset about what I'm saying about him? Four-time world champ, multi-millionaire, so he's a bit... Maybe because you're from the same city and maybe he expects you maybe sporting him or something? Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. We, 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 basically, we've seen it with George Groves, you know, he, he, he had to see a sports psychologist, you know, and George Groves was like winding him up, so I think he's got like a little... He's got like a little, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say a chip on his shoulder, but he's, he's a bit petty, isn't he, Carl Froch? He's not doing any interviews with any YouTube channels. If he can make up with George Groves, who he had two big fights with and a big rivalry, surely you and him could make up one day. Well, do, you, do you think I could make it happen? I'd ask him. If I he don't says, know, like George Groves made him a load of cash. You say you need a dance partner, don't you? to the tango. Carl Frotch loves money. You on his YouTube channel I think would do big views. It would generate a decent amount of views, yeah. A lot of people would love to see like a face-off between you and Carl Frotch. 
Yeah, they'd love to see it. I'm just trying to think about it because um, Carl Fox said he started to like George Groves when he, even after the fight, years after. Maybe like you one day. He said that, oh, George Groves has got kids as well. You know, I've got kids myself. This and that. I, can't, I don't know. Fuck Groves. Maybe you need to have kids and find a missus. Just trying to think about Carl Froch. You know, a lot of people are complaining about your nails tonight, uh, oh, Ty. Oh, shit. They, they all want to know, why don't you cut your nails? Well, you know what it is, like, you know how some people don't like it when people, like, scrape their fingers on the blackboard? Did you know that? On the what? Well, you know people, like, scrape their nails on a blackboard? On the black yeah, Some yeah. people, it goes through them, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You know when my nails are, like, really short? Yeah. And I just, like, brush it against, like, some kind of fucking, like, carpet or something like that. It's like a weird, like, feeling. It's, like, horrible. So they're up there as like protection? I just grow them, yeah. I don't, I don't like my nails too short, man. People don't like that scraping down the blackboard. There you go. I don't like it when my nails are really short and I like comment, my fingers like touch some kind of like carpet or something like that. Well, those that wonder that explains that. You know, yeah, it's a bit, it's, I know I look dirty in it, but well, you, my you, hygiene is a lot of fucking better than a lot of people's. Well, talking of hygiene, I think you were saying earlier about, you know, Washing your backside with a with a uh, with a B day when you know after number two. Who spoke about that? Yeah, he was talking about it on on the way down. You know, oh, just saying, casually. Yeah, you, you were saying, weren't you? Like, not many people do that. You were saying. Yeah, how did we get onto that topic? I got I, no, because you were just talking about hygiene, and I think you said you're you're one of these um, guys that you know you use a uh, jet wash. Yeah, if you get shit on your fingers, you're not just going to wipe it with dry tissue, are you? And then go and eat a sandwich. You're going to wash your hands with soap and water. So it's, it's, I said the same with your ass, man. You've got to be clean, man. So I look dirty with my nails. But you wash your bum? I wash it, yeah, man, fresh. Brush my tongue as well. Do you do that? Yeah. You brush your tongue, yeah? So that's where all the germs are. This woman came round to mine one time. She was like a dental hygienist. And she said, like, most of the germs build up on the tongue. So you have to brush your tongue, you know, when you brush your teeth. So I did it and I went back, went a bit too far back and I started like, you know, like I was going to throw up. Interesting stuff. You know, a while ago I asked you about um, comments that Jake Paul made and um, I, I genuinely asked you the question because like Jake Paul said, if he fought KSI and if he lost, he genuinely would chop his penis off. He made that statement, and you know, I wanted to ask you if, if you actually think he'd do that. Obviously, he lost to uh, Tommy Fury. Do you, do you think, based on what you've seen from both guys, does he beat KSI? And if he does, or if he doesn't, do you think he'd, he'd potentially chop a part of his penis off? Bro, you know, I'm too old for this, you know. You know, you know these guys, they're like little cartoon characters. They've done well, aren't they? You gotta you gotta admit that they've done well, but it's they were on like Nickelodeon, you know, as kids and it's almost like they've kept that same kind of mentality. You know what I mean? It's just like fucking I don't sit around watching KSI or Jake Paul, you know, talking about chopping their dick off and you know, KSI said the P word, didn't it? Been a bit racist, wasn't it? What do you make of that? He's a, he come out and apologised and uh, I think I spoke to a few boxers, you know, the Zine brothers were really unhappy about it. I think what they didn't like was the fact that the people around there were all laughing about it and and the fact that it was released as well because it was like an in-house production. Mm. Well, we spoke about things on the way to this fight, on the way here and back. I'm sure, like, if our conversations got leaked, you know, we'd be fucked. You'd be fucked? Yeah, I'd be fucked. I'd, be, I'd get arrested, get cancelled, like Andrew Tate. Shut down, probably locked up for hate speech. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people say things behind closed doors that like they won't say, you know, publicly. So yeah. it's come out, said the P word, KSI, and it's kind of caused him to get slandered. So he tried to, like, go to a mosque. You know, doing a bit of PR and uh, it's a bit cringe, isn't it? Do you not think 
a lot of, like you said there a lot of people probably do say things in private spaces however do you think it'd be fair that you should be judged on how you treat people like face to face rather than what you might think or say in private no i think it's better to it's, it's like they say better the devil you know i'd rather people to speak like openly so it's just safe ksi did hate asians yeah i don't think he does no but i'm saying like just say if he did Asians could boycott his events, not buy his little prime drink, you know what I mean? So he hit, hurt him in the pockets or whatever. Stop watching his little YouTube videos. So it's like better than the devil, you know. Isn't it? Well, whilst we're on that subject, you know, you've seen uh, Peter. If you know someone who's a nonce and they've got a little shop, you know, don't send your kids there, really. So it's like better than the devil, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And. Whilst we're on that subject of like being politically correct, you've seen with uh, Peter Fury in the last few days. You know he's been mega outspoken, mainly about you know the the whole just kind of media agenda. That Sam, the Sam Smith vibe. You know you've seen the videos of Sam Smith. You know in Sheffield the other day. I don't personally know him. I don't even know what he does. But the videos look a bit mental um, based on what he's doing. But you know what, what do you make of all that and? just based on what, what Peter's been tweeting about him. I haven't really been seeing what Peter's been saying, you know, but I've got my own opinions. Who are we talking about, that little Sam Smith guy? Do you reckon you could give us an opinion like that's not too uh, X-rated? Depends how deep you want to go, innit? I mean, like, I could say that, you know, certain people are trying to sort of like emasculate men and turn them into a bunch of posses. And they're trying to fuck up the family structure. You know, it's like divide and conquer, isn't it? You know, if you've got a load of broken homes, people are easier to control. Who do would you, would you think benefits of doing that? Well, people are easier to control, aren't they? You know, if, like, it depends how deep you want to get. If you've got like a, a strong masculine father figure in the house, he ain't going to tolerate bullshit. He ain't going to say, no, nah. he ain't going to say, yeah, I'll stay in for two years. He's going to say, no, nah, fuck that, I'm going to go out and make that money, you know, and provide for my, my wife and kids. You understand? Like, having a strong masculine man in the household is beneficial, isn't it? You know, if, you, if your dad's a posse, if your dad's not really on the scene, you're getting raised by a single mom. Most criminals come from single mother households, did you know that? I did, is that like a fact? Yeah, because like, there was a, like a study done amongst prisoners, you know, in prisons in America and England. Most of the most of the inmates were from single mother households because they didn't have that like strong disciplinarian there. When I was a kid, I wasn't scared of my mum at all. She couldn't tell me anything. Same with my brother. Like my brother wasn't scared of my mum either. I got a nephew. He's not scared of his mum, you know. But like, you know, it was like really scared of my dad, you know, when I was a kid. So I listened to him. His masculine energy kept me in line, you know, as a youngster. I think dads are important. Val valid points there. What about, um, you know, you, you've just changed the subject slightly. You, you've been doing a lot of streams and I've noticed, you know, in your, your recent lives, you've been on plenty of fish, talking to a lot of random people. So you talked to some people last night and I've seen a lot of your, I'm guessing your followers are jumping on the chats and writing some crazy stuff about you. Does that make you a bit nervous and puts, does it put you on edge that people just make it up like, you know, lies about you and and these people that you're chatting to are reading that, you know, I think one of the comments there was like, they were saying, you know, Time Boots had uh, dodgy relations with people of certain ages, etc., which obviously is false, but they're doing it to wind you up. Does that bother you at all? No, it don't bother me at all. So just take it as banter. End of the day, there's like a little database online that you can check, you know, to see if someone's a bit sexually dodgy. So you can feel free to go and check me out, check out my my past. You might find a few little drink driving convictions, but as far as anything kind of sexual, no, it's, it's one of them things, isn't it? You know, Joe Gallagher, he used to say he likes having sex with dogs. You know, Tesco's car parks. That was the rumour, wasn't it? Adam Smith locks kids in basements. That was the rumour, so people just like to just make up things, don't they? 
there. But it's mainly your your followers that just love making shit up. I think one of the things I read today is um, you know Moses Atuma, that you know, young heavyweight we was talking about on the way down. Somebody put in the comments that he's got knocked out, but he, he, he won on points. Every stream I do, someone says R.I.P. Joe Rogan. You know, and he's not dead, is he? But he's been saying it for years. They have been. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is. It's probably like a little. It's like these little people who get a dopamine rush, you know, from getting likes. It's that little rush in it, like people desperate to go viral, desperate to get attention. Everyone chasing the bag. Yeah, it's, I don't even know if it, I don't know, man. I don't know. And just like wrapping up, any final thoughts on uh, Tolworth? No, I think I'm going to leave it there. You know, I don't think I'm going to come back here. I'll come back here to support Baby Ting, you know, and his shows, but there's nothing there, like a cafe. I had a little cheeseburger, but that's about it. What else was there? What did you see that was interesting? Um, to be fair, we were just busy watching, watching the fights, to be fair. Yeah, I don't want to slag places off, but it's just like, why? It's a lot, a lot of potholes, a lot of potholes all around London. There's a lot of potholes. You're talking to me? Yeah. You're talking about potholes? Yeah. What, in London? Yeah, potholes everywhere, man. You were asking what Tollwood's like. I noticed there were a lot of potholes. Yeah, it's, it wasn't really, it wasn't really, it didn't really leave a good impression. Did you, um, did you find any ladies? You know, you've been watching a lot of, a lot of Jeffrey Dahmer recently and your fans are comparing you to him, uh, in a joking sense, uh, I should say. Uh, have you? Uh, did you bump into any ladies tonight? Did you? Did you get lucky with anyone? I saw you chatting to a few. Yeah, but what's that got to do with Jeffrey Dahmer, though? What are you saying? I'm trying to murder him. Like, well, I, I don't know. I don't but know. there's a big difference between chatting to women and Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, he, first of all, he was zesty. He was fruity, and he was a murderer. So you're saying that was I like, talking to women? Well, then you relating it to Jeffrey Dahmer? No, I just remembered because when you was. Uh, Reviewing him last night, I think some of you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Him. I know, I know where you're coming from in a way. What well, you're saying to me, like, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer, or, or did you talk to any women today? I'm like, I ain't got any intention of murdering any women today, man. Just trying to enjoy the boxing. And there was a few decent women. There's a few decent ones, boys. Swapping your numbers? Nah, I just. Uh, I don't know, I kind of got it. What about the ring card girls? I saw yeah, you chatting to one of the ring card ladies. Yeah, they were all right, you know, I just don't... Not really sociable like that. Not really a people person, do you know what I mean? That's why I came here today, you know, just to get amongst it. Instead of just sitting on my own, looking at a screen. Good That's stuff. what people are like these days, aren't they? Just communicate, you know, on the screens and direct messages. Top man. Dig pics. Dig pics, indeed. Uh, Just change your batteries. Uh, Ty, it's been a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed uh, the day out in London, and uh, ho hopefully we'll, we'll we'll travel the world one day. Yeah, we've got a few things lined up, haven't we? We've got a few little ideas. Big things. Time you know book I mean? travels the world, reviews everything and anything. Yeah. Watch your space soon. Yeah, that's it, man. Boxing King Media, man, it's rising up. You know what I mean? The numbers are jumping up, aren't they? They're all legit. It's just worth telling you, them. It's all legit. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, can you just like confirm that you haven't bought any subscribers? 100%. Like a lot of people are suggesting. Yeah. Well, you've due seen, to your what's it called exponential growth. Yeah. Well, you've seen the the, uh, the stats analytics firsthand, and you can confirm that yourself. Yeah. What's 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 been the like different? The jump. What was what caused the jump? The Sorry, jump kind of like was the uh, thousand subscribers in two weeks. The, the content from the Jake Paul Tommy Fury fight has gone viral and I think the one of the obvious things you can see is the views on the channel it's one thing buying subscribers which has, I don't even know how you can do that anyway but you can't buy views and the views back up the subscriber numbers and since your subscribers have gone up a lot have you noticed a bit of hostility from the other YouTubers the other YouTube channels like IFL and that Michelle Hall Phelps' channel and fucking the others, boxing social. Uh, to be fair, everyone's everyone's cool. Everyone's cool, and no issues with anyone. And uh, everyone just does their own thing, and we do our own thing. And 
and that the plan is, like I told you before, the plan is to become number one. Mm. Yeah, get in there, man. That's it, Tyne, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for the shit video. Yeah, man. Top man. <laughs>